hello friends so you're going to write CA final low exam in one month okay so CA final students are expected to have not only the analysis skill but also application skill uh, in company law and economic law as well accordingly preparation strategy deserve care concern and caution students have to be uh, always alert in updating their knowledge of current developments, recent amendments in relevant laws and uh, recent legal decision by regular consulting channels like CA and CA students. Final course students have to be thoroughly knowledgeable of important guidelines, leading judgments, notification, circulars, orders, etc. If you are conceptually uh, very clear and strong but not able to present it, then there is some problem indeed which is required to be sorted out immediately good conceptual knowledge with good writing and presentation skill is the key to success while starting you can go to easy and interesting topics like dividend directors audit etc but never ignore or try to underweight the economic law part this cover 30 percentage of exam paper in paper for corporate and economic laws this portion uh, play a vital role in this paper if nothing will work then surely this will work in this paper weightage of this portion usually remains 30 to 35 marks you cannot skip a lot of changes and amendments are taking place in provisions of SEBI guidelines. Keep yourself updated regarding that matter. Most of questions from FEMA includes residential status and current and capital account transaction. You will find one question from interpretation of statute even. Another important thing is maintain own language but learn keywords and phrases. Do not forget that your answer covers all points. Presentation is key when it comes to answering questions for CA exams. Just having the right answer is not going to fetch you marks. Make sure you answer the question in the sequence that is demanded by the ICAI. Don't draft your answer in big paragraph. Make it short one by uh, once by highlighting the important uh, important ones again okay? so you may use underlining ensure that you summarize the facts of the case and uh, properly explain explain the situation of the case conclude the answer by giving the appropriate solution presenting it in the appropriate manner will help the examiner to evaluate the paper easily which will in turn help to fetch you good scores. Quote the sections only if you are very sure about it. Quoting the wrong section for a correct answer would result in nothing. You, you understand? Do not forget about keywords. In first chapter, uh, appointment and qualification of director, ensure that you know about appointment of directors, number of directors, what is resident director, importance of um, appointment of woman director and alternate directors, etc. So what is director identification number and how it is allotted, what are the procedures, you know, as to who are independent directors, their appointment, qualifications, tenure, etc. Understand the provisions relating to the first director, additional director, alternate director, uh, nominee director and casual vacancy of the director. Know about the provisions relating to small shareholders director, retirement by rotation, principle of professional representation for appointment uh, uh, like that, maximum directorship etc. Understand the disqualifications pertaining to the appointment as director, duties of directors, vacation of office of director, resignation of director, removal of direction, directors, etc. In second chapter, appointment, remuneration of managerial personnel. You should know about provisions relating to appointment of managing director, 
whole time director and manager know the provisions regarding appointment of key managerial personnel in short KMPs understand the concept of maximum managerial remuneration and managerial remuneration payable in case of absence or inadequacy of profits calculation of profit for the purpose of managerial remuneration and recovery of managerial remuneration in certain cases able to explain the concept of compensation for a loss of office of managing or holding director or manager know about the functions of company secretary and requirements for secretarial audit in chapter 3 meetings of board and its powers understand the procedure and requirements of convening a board meeting know about the requisite uh, quorum for the conduct of board meetings understand the concept of audit committee nomination and um, remuneration committee and stakeholders relationship committee of the board explain the powers and restrictions imposed on the powers of board know about the various provisions relating to contribution to be made by companies to charitable funds political parties national defense fund etc explain the provisions relating to disclosure of interest by directors restriction on loan to directors and loans and investments made by a company understand about the related party and related party transactions know about the payment to directors for loss of office etc in connection with the transfer of undertaking property or shares in chapter 4 inspection inquiry and investigation you should know um, the provision relating to inspection inquiry and investigation powers of registrars inspectors and central government establishment of serious frauds investigation office and its objectives duties of directors and other employees during inspection inquiry and investigation Inspe investigation inspection report and action to be taken on it punishment for contravention or non-compliance based on the inspection report in chapter 5 compromises arrangements and amalgamations you should know the concept of compromise arrangement merger and amalgamation power to company members central government or tribunal to compromise or make arrangements with the members or creditors provision regarding fast track mergers cross border mergers power of central government to order mergers and amalgamation in the public interest power to acquire shares of shareholders descending from the scheme or contract approved by majority purchase of minority shareholding in chapter 6 prevention of oppression and mismanagement students should be knowing about the consequences which the NCLT might take to acknowledge the fact of oppression and mismanagement in a company the list of person who have the right to file the application know about the remedies available to aggrieved party in case of oppression or mismanagement the provisions relating to class action suits in chapter 7 winding up students should be knowing about the provision regarding winding up process and its modes winding up by the tribunal Procedure for winding up uh, to be monitored by the NCLT in chapter 8 producer company There is a happy news This topic excluded from syllabus through study guidelines In chapter 9 Companies incorporated outside India you will be able to know 
uh, like uh, the meaning of the foreign company and the application of act to it uh, explain the provisions related to accounts of foreign company service on foreign company understand the provisions of debentures annual return registration of charges books of accounts and their uh, inspection in foreign companies Unless the dating of prospectus and particulars to be contained therein, provisions acts to experts consent and allotment and registration of prospects, know about offer of Indian depository receipts. In chapter 10, miscellaneous provisions, know the provisions of registered valuers and valuation rules, know the provisions regarding Removal of names of companies from the register of companies. Identify the government companies and their annual reports. Analyzing the concept of Nidhis and dormant companies. Know about miscellaneous provisions. In chapter 11, compounding of offenses, adjudication, uh, you should know understand the type of uh, types of penalties that can be levied for the commission of offense under this act know the compoundable and non compoundable offenses identify the establishment of special courts and its jurisdiction know of the procedure of appeal and revision know about the mediation and conciliation panel Know of the power of central government to appoint company prosecutors, provisions related to appeal against acquittal, compensation for accusation and application that can be applied for imposing of fine. Explain the procedure related to adjudication of penalties. In chapter 12, National Company Law Tribunal and Appellate Tribunal. You should know about um, the importance and need of NCLT or uh, what orders can be passed by the NCLT and NCLAT timelines for appeal against the order and a provision related to transfer of pending proceedings. In chapter 13, corporate secretarial practice, drafting of notices, resolutions, you should be knowing the basics of drafting of some major documents such as reports, notices, minutes and resolutions. Know the law, law relating to drafting, laying and preserving these documents. In Securities Contract Regulation Act 1956 and SCR rules, Know the meaning of securities and um, the history of introducing the law in India. Learn what is corporatization and due mutualization of securities. Know how does the listing of securities take place. Explain what are the penalties and offenses under the Securities Contract Regulation Act 1956. Next chapter the Securities and Exchange Board of India Act 1992. SEBI LODR Regulations 2015 Students should able to answer uh, the roles, powers and functions of the Securities and Exchange Board of India SEBI Identify how the SEBI regulates the capital markets in India under a regulation of Government of India Understand the prohibition of manipulative and deceptive desider devices Insider trading and substantial acquisition of securities or control. Know the penalties and adjudication and identify the establishment, jurisdiction, authority and procedure of appellate tribunal. Know about the significant regulations governed by the SEPI LODR regulations 2015. In the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999 chapter certain important terms and definition under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999, the concept of residential status um, under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999, 
the meaning of current and capital account transactions and regulations and rules governing them the role of authorized persons under the foreign exchange management act 1999 and the regulations governing the transactions in relations to import and export of goods and services regulations governing overseas direct investments odi process of loans made by non resident lenders in foreign currency to indian borrowers the penalties imposed under the act and the process of adjudication the appellate procedure under the act in the prevention of money laundering act 2002 learn the measures to prevent and control money laundering no when the property obtained from the laundered money or be confiscated and seized no the penalties imposed and the adjudication process in money laundering cases in the foreign contribution regulation act 2010 you should know understand and appreciate significant terminologies based in that understand how the law regulates the acceptance and utilization of foreign contribution or foreign hospitality identify the restriction on acceptance and utilization of foreign contribution or foreign hospitality understand the procedure for the registration of persons to be regulated in this act understand how person regulated by the act are required to be manage financial aspects of foreign contribution know the adjudicating authority the provisions related to appeal and revision and offenses and penalties on contravention of the compliances in the arbitration and conciliation act 1996 meaning of the process of arbitration different types of arbitration and its difference with litigation arbitration agreement with the basic characteristics and features and condition for its enforcement arbitral tribunal and its constitutions basic requirements for an appointment of an arbitrator arbitral tribunal its removal and its replacement meaning of conciliation basic characteristic of the process of conciliation and role of conciliators now of the uh, commencement of process of conciliation proceedings in the chapter insolvency and bankruptcy code explain the concepts of insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 explain the relationship between bankruptcy insolvency and liquidation explain the important terminologies used in the code identify the structure and applicability of the code understand the manner and the process of insolvency resolution process for corporate persons understand the manner of fast track resolution corporate process understand the process of voluntary liquidation of corporate person knowledge of the adjudicating authority and the manner for disposal of applications understanding of the various offenses and penalties under the court understanding of the manner of regulation of insolvency professionals insolvency professional agencies and information utilities understanding of the constitution of the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india and its powers and functions knowledge of miscellaneous provisions regarding the management of the insolvency and bankruptcy fund delegation of powers board of jurisdiction enabling provisions under the code for cross border transaction trial of offenses and the regulation of powers to make the rules and regulations under the court and thank you for watching see you soon